I don't know that there's anybody here that knows me. No. Good. How did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Closer to your mouth. Closer to my mouth. Okay. Well, I've been around for a long time. <laughs> I've been working with soil and water and air issues going back actually to the 60s. Um, and I worked with a gal by the name of Libby Gregory, if anybody knows anything about free press. Um, Libby was one of the original founders of the Columbus Free Press. And they used to give an award every year for her, the Libby Award, um, which I am very proud to have gotten. It's the only award that I ever got that I really wanted. <laughs> um, I got involved in dealing with earth issues because when I met Libby in 67, she said to me, your responsibility is to take care of the earth. And I'm young, I'm in my 20s, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do with my life. I just said college. And so I thought, well, you know, I like science, science likes me, that sounds all right. And I just kept going and kept working and kept working and kept working on soil life. and water and air issues. And when we finally lost Libby in, I think it was 92 or 92, shortly thereafter, we can't I, hear you. Shortly you thereafter, I became very good friends with Teresa Mills, who some of you may have known. Um, if not, you guys really have missed out on all the good people. Um, but Teresa told me I couldn't quit, so I kept going. So, so most of my quote day job i'm 76 tomorrow is um oh. is that i'm working with issues related to oil and gas and their waste streams and all of the radioactive and heavy metals that are part of the waste streams that come from from both original conventional drilling and from the horizontal uh fracture drilling so so i'm wearing my frac stock uh shirt because when people know me, they usually know me about oil and gas. But I work with Ohio Geology. And so I get this phone call from Pat. Oh, heavens. Last October, I think it was. And she said, um, they're going to re-up the license at Perry. And we want to know if you think it's a good idea. Well. Of course, nuclear energy makes absolutely no sense at all because there is no place on the earth that's going to be stable long enough to hold the waste stream. There just isn't. There's no place on earth that has been stable that far back that we have to go forward to hold this waste stream. So I said, well, of course, I don't think it's a good idea, but that isn't the question. The question is whether Perry should have ever been built there in the first place. And I said, Ohio Department of Natural Resources Geo Survey told them, Washington, in the 70s when they were first looking at the site, do not build it there. Do not build it there because you're on Lake Erie, you're on the bluff, we've got landslides, we've got shoreline erosion, and you're sitting on a geologic fault, and we have earthquakes. Do not build it there. Well, all of these old white engineers and politicians male from um, Washington all decided that the Ohio scientists didn't know what we were talking about. And so they went ahead and built up there anyway because they had privacy and we couldn't stop them. So I told Pat what I thought I could do that might actually help would be to look at the modern information that we've got on the soils, the geology, of the area to see how stable or unstable the site is. And I went into it knowing that DNR said don't do it there, but I didn't know how bad bad was until I started doing the research. So we put together a paper about 35, 36 pages long and finished that up the end of 2023. And we looked at the soils, and we looked at the geology, we looked at the glacial history, we looked at the bedrock history, we looked at um, geologic hazards like landslides and, and shoreline erosion and earthquakes, and we looked at man-made issues like oil and gas drilling and salt mining under Lake Erie just down the road, and all the other kinds of things that could be a problem. 
Plus we also looked at groundwater and we looked at how the building is situated into the site and how close it sits to the edge. And we put together a really very nice report and we sent it off. And basically they sent back an analysis that said, thank you very much, go council. And, Lovely. you know, patted me on the head because I'm this nice old white-haired lady and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't really want to get me mad. I don't get mad very often, okay? I don't get mad very often at all. But one of my co-workers, who I've known since we were in school together in 1977, she loves it when I get mad. I get mad cool. And then I just cut him off with him. And so we wrote only this time, instead of being 35, 36 pages long, it's what, 75, 78 pages long? And I didn't write it. What I did was very carefully take from publications and web pages that are peer reviewed, that were done by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Geological Survey. And I quoted chapter and verse on essentially the four things that are going to take that site down. Even if the facility itself doesn't fail, the land under it is going to go. And to give you an idea of how long it has to sit there, if they stop tomorrow and lock all it in place, for those spent rods, to only have gone through one half-life of their decay rate. And they may have to go through many half-lifes of their decay rate. That's 24,000 years for one half-life. What did Perry nuclear power plant look like 24,000 years ago? It was under two miles of ice. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if I gotta go 24,000 and then 24,000 and then 24,000 and then 24,000 for how many numbers we don't know until we get down to what US EPA says is acceptable cleanup, which is five microcuries per gram of radium. Um, we're working a long time. But it's not just the spent fuel rods that are the problem. It's the uranium-235, which is the raw material for it, the power. And while it is a much, much shorter half-life than uranium-238 that thorium does, it's <coughs> the half-life of 700 million years. 700 million years for one half-life for those unused rods. What did the Earth look like 700 million years ago? Hmm. We were in the Precambrian. Yep. We were looking at unicellular life in oceans. That's <laughs> it. So literally, further back than we think of as life beyond unicellular stage in the past, we would have to go forward for just one half bite for those rods. So, it can't stay there. It can't stay there because if it does, it's going to fall into the lake. And how it's going to fall? It's going to fall several ways. Turns out that they really are sitting on a land, on a, on a um, earthquake fault. And somewhere in the mid 1910s, it started to get pretty active. And it got more and more and more and more and more active. So that we have a cluster in Lake Erie just to the northwest of the plant that started about 2017. And then in about 2021, we have another cluster at Madison, which is just to the southeast of the plant.